Now consider this. Some 70 to 80 percent of Canadians believe Canada is, quote, very generous, end of quote, when it comes to helping poor countries. But are we indeed? In per capita terms, last year Canada gave $81 in per capita compared to $524 for Luxembourg, $477 for Norway, $377 for Denmark, and $202 for Sweden. So, uh, appalling, truly appalling. A few words about NAFTA and the Free Trade Agreement. <clears throat> how, how Canadian, how, how truly Canadian for when Barack Obama and, and uh, Hillary Clinton make these ridiculous threats about renegotiating NAFTA, which, which their advisors would never allow them to even think of because it's so advantageous to the United States. What, what happens is Canadian, the Canadian media goes into a panic and our politicians go into a panic. Don't renegotiate NAFTA, please. <clears throat> it's beyond my understanding how any Canadians who love their country and who are uh, uh, rational in any way could have signed an agreement as horrendously bad as NAFTA. Do you know that uh, in a cold northern country like Canada, whether we like it or not, if we are running short of, say, natural gas, for example, we have to continue shipping natural gas to the Americans. On, and we are running short of natural gas, by the way. You know, Petro Canada is right now trying to negotiate contracts to buy Russian natural gas for Canada. Uh, we have to continue supplying Americans with our precious natural gas on a pro rata basis of the same ratio that we have for the last three years. For example, if we, for the last three years, have averaged 65% of our total <coughs> uh, um, production in exports to the United States, we have to continue supplying 65% to the United States whether we like it or not. Well, that's not quite true. We can, we can cut back. We can indeed cut back, but providing we also cut back on the same ratio to our own fellow citizens. Now, if that's not absurd, I don't know what is absurd. Uh, in addition to that, selling our oil and natural gas to the United States, we cannot charge Americans one single penny more than we charge Canadians. Not one single penny. Uh, supposing China or whoever offers us twice as much as the Americans, we can't sell it to the Americans uh, unless we raise our own prices as well. Now, uh, you know, NAFTA is a three-country agreement. And the third country, Mexico, the Americans, during the negotiations, came to Mexico and said, you know, we want to make the same arrangements we were making with Canada. And you know what the Mexicans did? The Mexicans laughed in their face. They said, are you nuts? There's, there's no way that we would ever agree to something like that. The next chapter in my book, uh, after the chapter on NAFTA, has to do with the Bow River and the North Saskatchewan River and the Athabasca River and the Banff Jasper Highway. If you've driven on the Banff Jasper Highway recently and seen the way the glaciers are shrinking, if you've seen the water levels dropping as, uh, is it Mr. Schindler, I think it is, is that his name? Yeah, as he has po pointed out, uh, those rivers, the, the, the volume of water is dropping in a precipitous manner as we pour hundreds of millions of gallons in, in, into the tar sands. Um, despite what big business has told you, within a very short period of time, again, as sure as we are in this room together, the Americans are going to be coming to us and saying, uh, sorry, but because of clause number or whatever in NAFTA, you have to start sharing your water with us. And uh, very nice. Uh, give, give some consideration to where that leaves your children and your grandchildren. We're going to be incredibly short of water if that ever happens. And uh, it's uh, spelled out in some detail in my book with some of the best experts on the subject. And if you read nothing else in my book, you should read that chapter on NAFTA. Free trade agreement, the uh, Globe and Mail in a lead editorial not too long ago said, <clears throat> the free trade agreement is the basis of the entire Canadian economy. Well, that's very nice, very interesting. Uh, 
no backup to it. That was the plain, simple statement. Uh, what I did is, for some reason, no business journalist has, has done it, and, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but no academic economist at a Canadian university has done it as well. I took the 17 years of the pre-free trade agreement up until and including 1988, and I measured them, and I measured the first 17 years of the free trade agreement after 1989, including 1989. And in every, maybe I can find it here somewhere, in every single category where we can make some decent comparisons, and I won't be able to find it, we, uh, <clears throat> well, darn it, I am going to find it. All right, in every single comparison, we were infinitely better off before the free trade agreement than after the free trade agreement in the following areas. In gross domestic product increases, in GDP increases compared to American increases in GDP, in productivity increases compared to American increases in productivity, in percentage rates of job creation, in unemployment rates compared to OECD averages, in rates of wage increases, in increases in personal income, in increases in family income, in increases in the value of building permits, and surprise in uh, increases in exports, and a surprise of all surprises in our Canadian share of the U.S. market. Now, what does it tell you again about our business press when nobody has stopped to try to figure that out and make that comparison? Instead, you come up with these ridiculous platitudes that it's the foundation of our entire economy. Okay, well, <clears throat> I think that's enough. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful that you came out tonight. I, I love so many people in this room who've been good friends to me over the years, and it really touches me a great deal and makes me feel good. And it, uh, frankly, uh, your, your being here... Uh, helps me continue to do my work and my research and uh, I want you to know that I love Edmonton, I love the people of Edmonton and uh, I feel incredibly grateful to have friends like you here in this room. Uh, in the event you want me to do so, I'll sign and dedicate a few books and thank you again for coming.